NHL teams will often try to copy the playstyle and process of previous cup-winning organizations. Teams have referred to the cup-winning teams of Boston, Pittsburgh, St. Louis, and more as examples of how to construct a cup contender and gone on to follow the model of those teams. With Vegas's cup victory, following the latest contender has the potential to completely change the way that GMs and organizations operate. From their very beginning, Vegas has done things differently, and if teams want to keep up with the best, changing to follow the path that the Golden Knights have paved could spawn huge shifts in the NHL going forward. Today, let's look at the history and process of the Vegas Golden Knights as the organization goes from 2017 expansion team to 2023 Cup champions. The story of this 2023 team begins when the franchise does, at the 2017 expansion draft. Vegas was always going to leave the draft with a roster to work with, but the club caught on to some ideas on how to improve their standing and was clever enough to execute upon them. Of the 30 selections made at the expansion draft, four remain on the team today. In the six seasons since, most were traded elsewhere, left, or retired. The four who remain were all very important to the success of the team today still. The trade deals involving expansion draft future considerations netted them arguably just as much value as the draft itself did. Many high-value assets were acquired in these deals, but only two players acquired in expansion draft side deals remain on the team today, Shea Theodore and Riley Smith. The traded assets were also instrumental in building the cup-winning squad, though. Alex Tuck was acquired for a 2018 third and expansion draft considerations from Minnesota. He served Vegas well for four seasons before they used him as a primary piece in acquiring the team's top-line center. The New York Islanders paid a first and second round pick, among other assets, to get Vegas to select Berube. The second round pick was part of the Thomas Tatar trade, while the player selected with the first helped Vegas land the player that would become their captain. With the 2017 expansion draft, Vegas was given an opportunity that no other team got, picking solid players off of each and every team in the NHL. Exiting the draft initially, though, this was the team Vegas was left with. There's a lot of talk about how Vegas was gifted an all-star team by the NHL, but that just isn't true. Going into their inaugural season, betting markets and analysts alike projected Vegas to finish in the range of 65 to 75 points, near bottom of the entire NHL. They finished with 109 and reached the cup final. Vegas got there in that first year through the competence of their own front office, one that saw an opportunity to exploit how other teams valued their players and use that to acquire more talent than what was even available to them. Vegas's methodology was so effective that teams were terrified to make any similar mistakes when Seattle joined the league, and was something that went on to land them star player after star player until they proved themselves to be the best team in the NHL. So let's talk about Vegas's trades, because it's what they've done in the trade market that could change the course of the NHL forever going forwards. Vegas has maybe the single most cutthroat model of constructing their team of any NHL organization. They go all in on a star player seemingly every time one is available and have no problem imploding their roster to get the deal done. Dating back to their very first season, Vegas has made a splash pretty much every year, which is made even wilder by the fact that their first big deal was pretty much a total flop. Thomas Tatar played only eight games in the 2018 Stanley Cup playoffs, despite the Golden Knights making it all the way to the finals. At the price of a first, second, and third round pick, this trade was a huge failure for a player that would leave the organization only seven months later. Tatar didn't leave because he was a rental, though. The Golden Knights, seeing that he didn't fit in with their roster, immediately flipped him following the season, acquiring forward Max Pacioretty for Montreal in the process. Pacioretty was much more successful in Vegas than Tatar was, even though this is another trade that can be argued that the Golden Knights lost. Former Vegas prospect Nick Suzuki would pan out to become captain and top-line center of the Montreal Canadiens, while Pacioretty wouldn't be around with the Golden Knights long enough to win a championship. Montreal may have done better in the deal, but that doesn't mean Vegas did bad. Pacioretty did a great job in the regular season and postseason, for Vegas when healthy, 
and was eventually given away to the Carolina Hurricanes for nothing in 2022 to clear more cap space. In order to reach that next level, Vegas needed to not just land a hit on their big swings, but smash them out of the park. They did just that on their next big move. In the same season in which they acquired Pacioretty, another big forward from a Canadian team was the top trade deadline target. No doubt Ottawa must have had some enticing offers on the table, but a package surrounding one of the top prospects at the time, Eric Brandstrom, was too tempting to pass up. For what now looks like almost nothing, the Vegas Golden Knights acquired Mark Stone. Since the trade, Stone has continued to be one of the best two-way forwards in the NHL, in addition to taking on the role of Vegas Golden Knights captain. He was instrumental in multiple playoff runs, one of the most reliable all-around players, and was the first player in Vegas Golden Knights history to lift the Stanley Cup after scoring a cup-clinching hat-trick. Their most recent blockbuster trade was their most controversial and most risky, but also what the Golden Knights would need to put them over the top. Coming off of an experimental surgery, Jack Eichel's value was greatly reduced from what the normal cost would be for a franchise-level talent. He still came at a tremendous cost, as Vegas gave up Alex Tuck in addition to three high-value futures. In Buffalo, Tuck evolved into a fantastic top six forward for the Sabres, and even outscored Eichel in the 2022-23 regular season. With respect to Tuck, though, Eichel's ceiling is a level above, and he sure looked like he reached that when playing in the playoffs for Vegas. Eichel was absolutely fantastic at both ends of the ice, a truly dominant top-line center on the best line in this year's playoffs. This trade proved to be a true win-win as Vegas got the cup they were seeking, and Buffalo got lots of valuable pieces to help the organization complete their rebuild. In the limited season since entering the NHL, the Vegas Golden Knights have made four big blockbuster-type moves. Only one truly failed, and two of the players acquired were absolutely essential in Vegas's victory over Florida in the finals. Making such big trades requires sacrifice, though and Vegas made plenty of sacrifices and decisions that can now go overlooked because the risk paid off. Bringing in Alex Petrangelo was another huge move, although it wasn't a trade, it was a free agency signing. It did, however, cause two players to be traded in order to clear the proper cap space. Paul Stastny and Nate Schmidt were both valuable middle-of-the-lineup pieces for Vegas. Both were given away for nothing within a three-day span, and Vegas signed Petrangelo to a $60 million contract. A few months prior to the Eichel trade, Vegas again ruthlessly moved on from a valuable asset. Ever since being selected in the initial expansion draft, Marc-Andre Fleury was Vegas's starting goalie. He was the main reason the team even made the finals in their first season, and a massive fan favorite. He won the Vesna Trophy while on the Golden Knights in 2021, and was traded the very same year. Vegas had, in the eyes of the NHL GMs who voted on the award, the best goalie in the NHL, and they threw him aside in pursuit of bettering the rest of the squad. In their pursuit of star talent, Vegas has displayed a ruthlessness and ambition to win at lengths that not many other organizations are willing to go to. No one was safe in Vegas, as star players, older players, younger players, prospects, and draft picks are all on the table if the organization thinks it can get them closer to a championship. But while the majority of these players were dumped for stars that worked out well in Vegas, that strategy won't work if you don't replace them with equally effective skaters on manageable cap hits. And as we know, Vegas is fantastic at that also. Just this season, Vegas got their top-line left winger and starting goalie, all from a fourth-round pick and prospect Zach Dean. The Golden Knights spotted excellent value in both Barbashev and Hill, both of whom were crucial to the eventual cup victory. Vegas also had a sustained history of acquiring these low-cost pieces and keeping them around while cheap for years on end. Chandler Stevenson, who was at one point Vegas's top-line center, was brought in from Washington for only a fifth-round pick, and as one of the NHL's best-value contracts, even still through next season. 
Alec Martinez came at a decent cost in terms of assets and cap space, but provides even more back as a dependable defensive defenseman. And sure, there's been players like these brought in that don't work out, but when they don't, Vegas is quick to bite the bullet so that they can move on to someone better and focus on improving another part of their roster. The Vegas Golden Knights are an organization that is cold-hearted and calculated in exactly the right way. Some will make the argument that the NHL gifted Vegas a superstar team. The Golden Knights did get a 40-goal scorer in William Carlson and Conn Smythe Trophy winner in Jonathan Marcheseau out of the expansion draft. But it was Vegas who was able to identify their talent, and Vegas who found a way to add pieces to their roster with clever side deals during the expansion process. Ever since the expansion draft, Vegas has been relentless in their pursuit of a championship, and now they've got one. The way Vegas went about winning the Stanley Cup has the potential to change the NHL forever. Their process shows that when star players become available, teams should be doing whatever it takes to get them. Trade future assets, trade fan favorites, at the end of the day, the fans won't be upset when they're rewarded with the incredible success Vegas has had in such a short time. The Vegas Golden Knights process is one that is uniquely theirs, building through the expansion draft in a way no other team has done before or will do ever again. But their aggressive, emotionless model is something that no doubt other teams will begin to try to copy. Because of what Vegas has done, we could very well see more blockbuster trades, more great players let go for nothing, and more risk-taking. All of this would be great for the NHL. And all of this could very well help build the next cup contender, or even the next dynasty.